Hi everyone, my name is Sergey Gusev and welcome to my channel. If you love painting portraits as much as I do, this video is specially for you. Today I'm gonna paint a portrait of a girl and give you my 10 best tips to help you out. If you want to follow my tips and improve your skills, just paint alongside with me. Make sure you have a stretched canvas 20 times 24 inches primed with acrylic gesso. I also painted my canvas with pink acrylic because it's gonna be a portrait of a girl. Don't forget about oil paints. The list of them you can see right now on the screen. You can use any brand you personally like. As a thinner, I'm gonna use Gamsel. Don't forget to pick up a few brushes, two big bristle ones, two synthetics middle-sized and one tiny synthetic with a pointed round tip for the very small details. As always, I suggest you to visit my webpage and download the full video tutorials to improve your skills and unlock new opportunities. There is a good discount now. Subscribe to my channel and you won't miss out on my new videos. Find me on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, I think I'm ready to give you my 10 best tips. And if you are ready, let's begin. Let's look at my palette. You see that I have only 7 colors on the palette. Usually I use a limited palette. It is white, cadmium lemon, cadmium red, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, raw umber and ultramarine. So let's mix ochre, umber and add a little burnt sienna. As a medium, I'm using an autoless thinner and I got a white bristle brush for the initial sketch. As in this video I don't make any underdrawing or underpainting, I start painting right away. I'm using all the colors from my palette. But first of all, I will outline the composition. So, here is my first advice. Make sure that the composition looks good. I do not advise making the head bigger than life size. Also, don't leave a lot of empty space around. The head will be simply drowning in it. I suggest placing the head closer to the center of the canvas, but leave more space in front of the eyes. My second tip is start from the dark tones. It is always more convenient to paint from a dark spot. Our eyes perceive bad dark colors. It is easier to understand dark ones. So it always makes sense to start with the shadows, especially in the face. I keep saying that it is very difficult to get light half tones on a white canvas. So it makes sense to surround the head with darks. You can use the background, clothes, hair. It is always more convenient to work almost at the same time over lights and shadows. So this is my third tip. Do not try to paint a shadow first, finish it, find all the reflections, soften the edges and then start working on the light. Try to block in both at the same time. Spend a minute or two on the shadow 
and immediately paint next to it the light. Literally two or three rough brush strokes are enough to see how right or wrong the tone and color are. How much darker the shadow is than the light. The shadow will always be warmer when the light source is cold. And the light is colder than the shadow. This tonal and color difference you see much better when you have light and shadow next to each other on canvas. Now we don't think about the details and think more about the spots. We can add a little more burnt sienna, a little more medium, so it will be more convenient to paint big spots. Paint the shadow on the face, neck. As we do not do the underpainting, we can use white right from the beginning. And mix the color for the light part of the face. So, my fourth tip is, do not care about the details in the beginning. Think about big spots. If you watched my previous videos, then you remember that in the beginning I don't recommend painting details. Try to start from the big proportions and composition. That is, make sure that the head isn't too big or too small and is closer to the center of the canvas. As soon as you make sure that the composition is quite correct and the proportions are correct, you can start slowly specifying the details of the head. At this stage we do not draw. We work with big spots of light and shadow. And if we do make another drawing, we don't think about the details at all. We will deal with the details at the end. Draw them quite carefully. But only after we find the right tonal and color relationships. Now we are simply thinking about lights and shadows. And painting with big spots. And here is my next tip. Remember about the light source. In this case, we have a cold light source. So the light part will be also cold. And the shadows will be warm. In this case, the difference between light and shadow is very visible. The light is very cold. The shadow is very warm. There is ochre, a little burnt sienna. Don't care much about the details. Beginners usually like to concentrate on one detail, copy it, and then when they start working on another part, it turns out to be in a wrong place. We finish the details at the end. We do not start from finishing details. We start from big relationships, large color and tonal spots. At the beginning we work on the entire surface of the canvas. 
and do not concentrate on any particular detail. Also remember that the further cheek and cheekbone will be warmer. Because it is further away from the light source. And the other cheek and cheekbone are very cold. My next tip says, don't use too much medium. As you can see, I'm painting quite thick. I do not use the thinner at this stage. In general, I do not like to use mediums. And usually I use it at the very beginning to sketch a composition and block in large spots to see the composition better. And I use it at the end when it's necessary to finish the very small details with a pointing synthetic brush. The more, the more medium you use, the more difficult it gets to construct the head and clarify its construction. Imagine that you are a sculptor working with clay. It has to be quite thick. Otherwise, it's impossible to construct and make volume. The same in painting. It is much better to have thick paint for constructing the volume of the head. Now I'm adjusting the shape of the eyes and lips. I'm working more closely on the details, but I still keep all of them in the spot. I don't concentrate on any detail and also start working more closely on the resemblance. As I said at the beginning, we can slightly strengthen the color and tonal relationships. Because usually beginners like to make colors dirty. So my next advice says, paint with bright colors in the beginning. I mean, you can make the shadow even brighter than it is. Add more ochre or cadmium lemon. And at the end, if it is too bright, we can always glaze it. So, it will become a little darker and less bright. Beginners are usually scared of colors and like to make them quite muddy. Instead, use pure ones on purpose to avoid making your artwork dull and grayish. When you are working on the background, it is very important not just to paint it separately from the head, but first also correct the shape of the head, adjust the silhouette, and secondly, soften the edges of the shape. That is, try to keep the head away from looking too much like a cutout. Don't make the edges too hard. Remember that there is air surrounding the form and there is space. The edges always get softer when they get further away from us. We can paint the nose that is in the foreground and the hair that is in the background equally sharp. The edges, the borders of the shape, 
should merge with the backgrounds. Then we'll create a convincing sense of space. If you look at the works of great artists, the old masters or masters of the second half of the 19th century, you will see that they painted very softly and avoided hard touches. Sometimes they put accents into the eyes because this is quite an important detail. And our attention is concentrated around that detail. But the red they painted very softly literally merging with the background. And thus we perceive the first plan and the most important details of the head better. All the secondary things we can paint very softly. Especially the edges of the form. Many beginners paint them too hard. But don't forget that we have to create a three-dimensional image on a two-dimensional surface of the canvas. Now we have most of the work coming to the end. We have outlined the composition, proportions, blocked in the lights, quite thick, work in the shadows. We already have big tonal relationships. And now we can devote more time to the likeness, drawing the details, correcting the form. So let's do it. Now I'm working a little on the eyes. I draw the iris pupil, add a reflection into the iris. You can take a soft synthetic and draw. In my videos I talked a lot about how to draw the eyes. And this time I will repeat again that the eye is a very complex shape. Probably this is the most complex form in the head, in the portrait. It's quite complex and expressive. And of course, when we paint eyes, we need to understand what details it consists of. Because if we don't, then many mistakes will show up. Usually to understand the construction, we need to make a lot of sketches or longer studies. And very often beginners draw the eyes of David's sculpture by Michelangelo. This is a fairly large form. The details are very visible. You can see even the iris pupil, see the spherical shape of the eye and the eye socket. Therefore, usually in art schools, this is a basic task before drawing a life portrait. They study the details of a plaster head, make longer drawings, short sketches, and so on. That is, if you have any questions, of course you can take a book on anatomy, read it, understand the anatomy of the eye, but you won't learn how to draw. So. To understand how to draw the eye, you have to literally draw it. Draw this cast of the eye from different angles with different light. Actually, it is a very interesting task. You can even buy a cast. It's all very expensive and it will help you a lot in studying this anatomy, proportions, and all the great artists started from drawing plastic models before drawing a life figure or portrait. So, this is my next tip. Make sketches and longer studies of facial details to understand their construction better. Getting closer to the end, I correct small details, half-tones, softened edges.
Don't forget that in the end it's very important to put tonal accents. So my last tip for today is don't be afraid of tonal accents. Beginners are usually afraid of tonal accents, but tone is very important for creating volume and space. Remember that the shadows will always be darker than the lights. And this difference is very visible. Even if we don't have the direct sunlight, this tonal difference is always very well seen. So, at the end, make sure that these accents exist. Make sure that the shadow in the eye socket will be one of the darkest in the portrait because it is closer to the source of light than the other shadows. Make sure that the shadows in the nostrils are dark enough. The light doesn't get in there. At the very end, we check out the entire surface of the canvas, making sure that the portrait is alike, softening the form where it goes away from us. Remember that the nose will always be in the foreground. All the parts of the head will be slightly further away from us, so we paint them softer. Don't forget that it is important having not only dark accents, but also light ones, the highlights or just light half-tones. Usually they are on the surface of the forehead, because the forehead is very close to the source of light, which comes from above, making the cheek, forehead and nose very light and cold. At the very end, you can work more carefully on the eyes, draw the irises, reflection in the irises. Remember that the outline of the iris will be darker than its inner part. And also when you put highlights in the eyes, don't forget that they lie on the surface of the cornea, which we do not see. We see only the highlight on its surface. The edges of the highlight will always be sharp and strong, because first of all, it's closer to us, the pupil and the iris are further away, and secondly, the surface of the cornea is glossy. And as you remember, highlights on glossy surfaces are always very sharp and have hard edges. If we look, for example, at the forehead, there is also a highlight, but it is not visible at all because it is matte. It blends with the light halftones around, unlike on glossy surfaces, where the highlights are very clearly seen. They are always very bright and sharp, and their edges are very strong. At the very end, I work only with a small synthetic with a pointed tip. It's very convenient to draw some very small details with it. And I think after I finish working over the eyes, this portrait can be completed. Of course, we can always find some more details, but remember that we are creating not a copy, but an art piece. Therefore, it is very important for us to keep the portrait fresh, lively, and a little bit unfinished. And don't paint absolutely everything that you see.
Okay, I think this portal is finished now. And you can look close at the textures and brush strokes on the surface of the canvas. I think it's quite interesting for you to see it closed up. You see that the layer of paint is quite thick. And I think that at this stage I'm going to stop working on this portrait. You have just watched my tutorial. I hope it was interesting and inspiring for you. Thumbs up if you like it. You can help me out and share this video with your friends on your favorite social network. Subscribe to this channel, find me on Instagram and Facebook. Visit my webpage to download the full video tutorials. I wish you good luck with your artworks, guys, and see you soon!